On a cold, dark evening in the fall of 2003, I excitedly rushed my tired parents over to my elementary school's Scholastic Book Fair. I was a small little second grader at the time, and my father had just recently upgraded our family PC. So instead of the books I always sought to bury myself in as a child, I wandered over to the PC and DVD section of the makeshift bookstore in my school's library to find something a little bit more cutting edge. It was there that I discovered a now long-running game series by Her Interactive titled Nancy Drew. Based on the popular Nancy Drew mystery book series written by several authors under the pseudonym Carolyn Keene. Now, I had no idea who Nancy Drew was at the time because I hadn't yet discovered the book series. But as a relatively poor child who didn't get the opportunity to buy very many things often, I always looked for things that would give me the most value whenever I did get the chance to buy something. And in this case at the Scholastic Book Fair, that value was a two-pack game bundle of Nancy Drew Message in a Haunted Mansion and Nancy Drew Stay Tuned for Danger. Two games for the price of one. And what drew me to these games wasn't just their savings value. They advertised themselves as 3D interactive mystery games, something I wasn't yet familiar with in my youth. I didn't really know very many mysteries when I was a kid. It just wasn't a genre I was exposed to at the time. So when I saw these Nancy Drew games sitting upon a shelf with their eerie little covers, I felt this little surge of excitement in my heart that all people get when they're about to try something intriguing for the first time. This was my chance to become a detective, and all I had to do was buy these bundled CDs and I could flex my brain in a way it hadn't been flexed before. It was an invigorating thought. So, seeing how excited I was, my lovely parents bought the bundled game pack for me without question. And when I got home and booted up Message in a Haunted Mansion, I was scared shitless. I see you. But this wasn't the end of my Nancy Drew journey. In fact, it was far from it. You see, this very moment was what influenced so much of my love for the mystery genre. And part of it is that thrill you get from trying to confront and conquer the unknown. And from that point forward, since I was a scared little kid, I played both the Nancy Drew games I owned with my older sister. And we loved them. From the characters, to the stories, to the mysteries themselves. We absolutely could not get enough of Nancy Drew. These two games alone had enough twists and turns to keep us guessing for weeks. So when Nancy Drew Curse of Blackmore Manor came out the next year, my sister and I begged our parents to buy it for us. And them doing that really solidified Nancy Drew as a prominent figure in my formative years. I have such distinct memories of playing these three Nancy Drew games as a kid. I would be sat there at our family PC alongside my sister, and we would use our old college-ruled spiral notebooks from school as our notepads for the mysteries at hand. We would write down notes about each suspect. We would write down clues that we would discover. We would write out possible solutions to every puzzle we came across. We would really get into it like we were real detectives solving a real mystery. And having that childlike innocence where you feel like a game is more than just a game is such an indescribable feeling. The only way I can put it into words is if I said that playing the game was as if I was no longer myself for that day. I wasn't just some little kid sitting at a computer and clicking random things on a screen. I was a detective. I was a mystery solver. I was someone who could use my brain to do something good. I was, in essence, Nancy Drew. That's what playing a Nancy Drew game felt like to me. I was clearly playing a game, but at the same time, it was as if I was solving a real mystery. And that's because in a sense, I really was. And solving a mystery feels damn good. It puts so many of your senses and your brain to the test. And after playing those three Nancy Drew games, 
My whole world opened up to a genre that continues to fill me with so much joy to this day. It was as if I suddenly unlocked something within me that I didn't know was there yet. I graduated to things like reading the Nancy Drew books, the Hardy Boy series, Agatha Christie novels, to playing mystery games in the modern era like Outer Wilds and Return of the Oberdin, to watching shows like True Detective and Only Murders in the Building. I even fell in love with things like escape rooms and true crime content as well, consuming all sorts of podcasts and books and YouTube videos like so many other people of my generation. And, like all people who love the mystery genre, I have an itch for solving mysteries and I love myself some twists and turns. I wouldn't call myself the greatest detective or sleuth on this planet, but I find myself always trying to solve mysteries just like I did when I was an 8 year old sitting in the living room with my sister playing Nancy Drew. I'm even annoying enough to the point that I try to guess mysteries super actively whenever I'm watching movies or TV shows. And I will flex the fact that I guessed the twist for The Prestige really early on into the film entirely due to the dialogue of the movie. And I have Nancy Drew to thank for that skill. Despite Nancy Drew playing such a huge role in my genre taste, however, I never did play another Nancy Drew game past those three I played as a kid despite the fact that the game series has like 33 games. And ever since then, I've consumed so much mystery based content, but very few of them have ever given me the satisfaction of how a Nancy Drew game made me feel while solving a mystery. So it's a little weird that I've never revisited the series except watch videos about the games over the last decade and a half. And I want to feel the same way I felt when I was a kid. I want to feel that wonder and excitement and that thrill of solving a mystery. And so, after a decade and a half of not playing any Nancy Drew games, I played one last weekend. I played Nancy Drew Warnings at Waverly Academy. And that game is the perfect game to tell you why the Nancy Drew games are just so damn amazing. It's the perfect game to tell you why the Nancy Drew games are a beautiful experience, even to this day. So let's take a closer look at Warnings at Waverly Academy, and I'll tell you just why you should play the Nancy Drew games. Nancy Drew Warnings at Waverly Academy follows 18-year-old amateur detective Nancy Drew in her undercover quest to solve a dangerous mystery at a prestigious girls boarding school. Someone has been leaving threatening notes aimed at the school's valedictorian candidates, and those who receive the notes end up in dangerous accidents that force them to leave the school. Nancy must solve the mystery as to who's writing these notes and why they're doing it and she must do so before things turn deadly. Now, as much as I'd love to start talking about the entire plot of Warnings at Waverly Academy, this video isn't really about analyzing all the little details of the game. It's more about what this game as a whole means to me and why I think it's an excellent experience. So I'm not going to be spoiling huge plot points in the story just in case you wanted to try it out for yourself. The first thing I want to mention is that this game brings me back to such a specific time in my life. Just like when I first played those three Nancy Drew games as a kid, I ended up doing the same things I used to do in order to solve her mysteries. It was like I was an 8 year old kid again, huddled up in front of my computer on a dark cold autumn night with a notebook and a pencil next to me. It was a surreal feeling. If you've ever felt really nostalgic about something, so much so to the point that you can feel that uncomfortable but welcome to pang in your heart in remembrance of good times long gone, then you know how I felt as soon as I launched this game. That's what makes Nancy Drew games so beautiful to me now. They can capture a particular moment in time and just play it back for you. I mean, if you've never played a Nancy Drew game, you obviously won't have that same feeling. But perhaps you will if you've ever had a good experience with a cozy mystery at least once in your life. 
And who knows? Maybe you can play the series for the first time today and you'll replay the games again in the future to feel the same feeling I felt. But let's talk a little bit more about Warnings at Waverly Academy since I made such a big deal about playing it. This game has one of my favorite settings for the Nancy Drew universe thus far. I mean, I didn't go to a boarding school, nor did I ever attend an all-girls school, but the fact that this game is set at a school in general is really compelling to me as an educator. This isn't the only Nancy Drew game set at a school, but nevertheless, there's something special about Waverly Academy itself. And the first part of it comes down to its characters. Quite a few people say that they aren't a fan of the characters in this game because most of them are pretty unlikable. But that's actually the reason I like these characters. They're obviously high school stereotypes without a lot of depth. But regardless of that, they're actually fairly realistic depictions of students at a high school. Students can be catty, petty, and most importantly, competitive. And when you're a student who wants to be valedictorian at a prestigious school like these girls, there's no question as to why they act the way they do. You don't even need to go to a competitive or high-performing high school to see kids like the girls in this game. Everywhere you go, students spread rumors, create outcasts, cheat on their work, etc, etc. They don't do good things. They're human just like the rest of us. And this realism in the characters just makes them lovable. Whenever I was working at the snack shop in the game, I would love listening to the students gossip about each other and about the teachers at their school. It would remind me of every student conversation I've ever overheard. And trust me, I've heard plenty, and they're just like the conversations in this game. You're just saying that. And I go, no, it's totally true. And then she goes, she goes, well, I think you're lying. No way, she said that. So what did you do? So I go, I go, no, this is what I do when I'm lying. And you know that bookshelf of hers with all her cutesy little mementos and pictures of her dogs and cats and baby brothers and stuff? I dumped it over. No way, oh my gosh, ever since seventh grade, I have so wanted to do that. But other than the amusing characters in this game, the mystery itself is no slouch. The stakes aren't incredibly high when you think about it because nobody has died, but they are still pretty serious when you realize that the mysterious warning notes being sent to students are negatively affecting the academic impact of the students at the school, not to mention the accidents being capable of causing death if the suspect isn't careful. For example, one student was sent home due to consuming a food she was allergic to that then sent her to the hospital. And if the suspect wasn't careful, that incident could have led to the student's death. And that's enough to make you want to solve this mystery. And like I said earlier, it's no slouch. It has some great twists in it that I won't spoil, and it's likely that you won't even be able to guess these twists in advance. The best part is, None of the twists in this game even feel all that far-fetched. It's a pretty grounded story, and I appreciate it for that. The best part about this game, though, is that the puzzles really felt solvable. There was never a point where I felt so frustrated that I just had to stop and give up. And that's honestly one of the most important aspects of a mystery to me. If you're forced to look things up all the time, it really pulls you out of the experience because you're not doing the detective work anymore. Someone else is. And again, that's why the Nancy Drew games are just so incredible to me even after all these years. They make you feel like the detective at all times, even if you do sometimes need a little help. Except for a few puzzles, the games never feel so cryptic to the point that they drive you crazy and they're also not so easy to the point where you're just steamrolling your way to the end. And that really goes for all the games, not just warnings at Waverly Academy. And that final idea is kind of where I want to start wrapping up this video. As a lover of mysteries, I appreciate the Nancy Drew games so much for the role they've played in my life and will continue to play in my life. 
I've never lost that fire to solve the unsolved, and I don't anticipate losing that fire anytime soon either. And it's all thanks to Nancy Drew. I hope you can see the beauty in the Nancy Drew games just like I do. Everyone loves a great mystery, and these games have plenty of them. And you could be the one to solve them. If you've got an itch to solve mysteries, please check the games out. I promise you they won't disappoint you. And to that little boy who found himself sat next to his older sister solving a creepy mystery about ghosts in a haunted mansion, I'm happy you made that choice to buy those two games on that one fateful evening. It has made all the difference. Hey guys, if you enjoy this review, don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content similar to this. I make videos about all things writing related. I'd also like to thank my patron Edith Lopez Torres for helping make this video happen. If you'd like to support me further, please check out my Patreon. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And if you've got some time, check out some of my other videos too. I really appreciate you watching this one. And to everyone who made it to the end here, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.